Good evening. My name is David Dirks. I'm Vice President of Marketing here at Hudson Valley Credit Union. And I want to welcome you who are just joining us or already joined us for our continuing series, career series. Tonight, we're very excited to have a very special guest um, who I'll introduce in a second. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about what Hudson Valley Credit Union is doing um, as a financial institution talking about careers. And um, I want to link it to financial success in life. One of the things that we know at Hudson Valley is that the better prepared you are for your career, wherever, whatever stage of career you're at, beginning, mid, maybe a little bit later in transition in your career, um, your financial success in life is largely due to how well you manage your career, what you do to set that up. And so as a financial institution, you know, uh, at Hudson Valley, we recognize that's important. And so we're gonna invest continually in providing these kinds of webinars focused on career development. Tonight, we're focusing on the topic of managing your career growth. And I, our, our guest tonight is Dr. Jack Roche. Um, a little uh, introduction uh, about Dr. Roche, who I've known for a long time. Uh, we've had uh, a professional relationship uh, going spanning many years, and he was a perfect choice for us to do this because he's seen in his own dynamic career and in the careers of others, including his many thousands of students now uh, as a professor. So let me introduce him. Dr. Roche has held uh, many senior executive positions in a broad range of industries, including commodities, publishing, law, manufacturing, and of course, academia for many years. Dr. Roche is currently an associate professor at Fisher College which is located outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and has also taught for the New York Institute of Technology, uh, their Graduate School of Management, uh, Long Island University's their School of Management, and internationally, he has also been a guest professor at the University of Applied Labor Studies in Mannheim, Germany, and the University of Applied Science in Ludwigshafen, Germany. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Hopefully I did. In the academic arena, he has also held positions as campus dean and as vice president of career services. And he's been listed uh, in the marquee of Who's Who in America since 1994. He's a graduate locally here of Marist College. Um, so he's, uh, he's a local Hudson Valley person at one point in time in his career and he transitioned since then. He's been all over the world, as you can see. So Dr. DeRoche, I wanna uh, welcome you to our uh, webinar tonight. Uh, it's great to be here with you again, Dave. So, yeah, a little housekeeping before I start with the first question for Dr. Roche and in our conversation tonight. Um, so, if you are uh, visiting us tonight, we have a few of you that are signed in. If you have a question, you can easily just um, go to the Q and A section at the bottom or the chat section located at the bottom of your screen, and just type in your question, and we'll be able to answer them. I have a bunch of questions to start with tonight as we go forward. So Dr. Roche, our first question is, you know, as you look at your own career and your observations from those that you've worked with and taught over the years, including, as I said before, the many thousands of students that have been through your classes over the years, what are, do you think are the really key foundations of any great career? And, and what I'm looking for there is, you know, what do you have to have regardless of the industry uh, what do you think are some of the key things you have to have in your career in order to really be successful? Well, I guess the first thing is uh, you got to set a goal. Where do you want to be five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now? And a lot of people, including myself, when I first started out, I didn't set a goal. And it wasn't until that I got into the academic world that I realized how important it is for people to set goals which therefore brings me to the reason that I'm teaching a course called Preparation for Life and Careers. And as soon as I meet the students, one of the first things that I tell them is you got to set a goal. Where do you want to be in five years from now? Um, I guess the, the second thing, and, and, this is a, and this is a reflection on my career, is you got to like what you do. I love to teach. And I was just telling Dave before I had a, an opportunity to um, become a banker. And I turned it down because I would not be able to teach. 
And so I decided that uh, this is what I'm, I'm, I like it. It doesn't pay a lot, but that's okay. Uh, as long as you like it, um, you'll be very happy with your career. And my career has uh, gone to a point where uh, I can retire with a, a smile on my face, really. Yeah. Um, now, so, you know what, and so uh, let's talk about, there's different phases of a career here. So some people that are listening to this uh, webinar are gonna be at the very early stages. We're gonna talk about those. And then some people are gonna be at sort of the mid career. They're kind of on their way. Maybe some of them are like kind of plateaued or kind of stuck in a certain area. And then some are more mature in their career. Like myself, I've been in marketing for you know 25 plus years. So I'm not certainly at the beginning of my career. I'm not even at the middle of my career, but I'm still at, I'm still at an engaged level. Let's start with the, 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 let's say, those that are at the very beginning of their career, either just post-college or maybe a few years in, and they've decided on something. Um, what advice do you have to them early on, uh, either at, in college or after they graduate, that they need to really deal with beyond just the decision-making of you know, focusing on a certain area? What other advice do you have for the beginning? At the beginning? Uh, I guess from the beginning, uh, the first thing you really got to do is network. You got to get to know people. I'm, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, and it's it's not what you know, it's who you know. And people get people careers, and so the more people that you know, the better the networking that you're doing. Uh, you'll see your career uh, really take a, a shot off into space. Um, the second thing probably is how do you do you present yourself professionally? When you walk up to an individual and you, for example, you're, you're at a, uh, a conference or a, a, a thing where you have a drink in your hand, assuming you're over 21, you have a drink in your hand. How do you, how do you um, meet the people? The handshake, the, the, the looking in their eye, the, the professional way of how, what impression are you creating upon the people that you're meeting who probably could wind up helping you in your career. Uh, and uh, another thing is one of the things that I do every day is I'm preparing my, my growth for my career literally every day. And there isn't, a day go, there isn't a day that goes by when I don't think about my next step in my career. Now, I'm getting to a point right now where I'm thinking retirement and I look back and of all the things that I've done, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. And, and I prepared myself for it. I, every, every day, every week, every month, every year, if, when I set my goal, I changed it a little, tweaked it a little um, to go along with what's happening. Of course, COVID really did a job, I think, on everybody's career, um, but, but that's, that's another story. Um, the other thing that uh, what I just said is that you shouldn't set, set a goal and write it down and then sit back and wait for it to happen. Mm. Uh, things are going to happen. And when things do happen, um, you'll have to revisit the goal. Uh, a, a case in point, I had, number one, I had no desire to go to college. I was in high school and all I wanted to do was to get into the Navy. Well, my friends were going to college. All right. So I went to college and then I, you know, you go through the classes and all of a sudden I've got a degree. And then I said, well, what am I going to do with this degree? And I said, well, why don't I teach? Well, in New York state, in order to be a, a teacher, you have to get a master's degree. So I got a master's degree. And then while I had my master's degree, my undergraduate school, Maris called me up and said, we're starting an MBA program. Would you like to be one of the students? I said, okay. So now I'm taking two master's degrees at the same time. I, I got both degrees. And then when I got into the field of education, my dean comes up to me and says, you know, you're going to have to get your doctorate. So I went out and got the doctorate. So I, I, what I'm driving at is that your career changes sometimes with outside influences and you've got to pick them up. You've got to go with the flow, um, but you got to make the right decisions. And I truly believe um, going for my doctorate was probably one of the best things that I ever did. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's not for everybody. And, you know, sometimes having a doctorate is actually going to push you back. Yeah. Um, but in education, obviously, in academia, a doctorate is important. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm thrilled with it, really. I had a great time doing it, and I learned a lot. So that brings me to, I, and I'm listening to what you're saying, which is, you know, very important. It's like you've, you've got to kind of go with the flow, but you have to be in tune with your environment to understand where these opportunities are, right? I mean, that's, you're, you, you can't be, like you said, you can't be sitting back like this, waiting for things to come to you. When you talked about being prepared every day, and I took that to mean that, you know, you have to invest in yourself. You, it was investing in the degrees and the, you know, the PhD and, and ongoing for people that are not, let's say, uh, in that, but how do you suggest people invest in themselves, um, like their continual learning and their ability to stay up on the latest? What, what, what's going on there? You hit the nail on the head. You have to be a lifelong learner. If, if you think that even after you get your doctorate, uh, you're going to stop learning. No, no, that's, that's not going to happen. You got to constantly learn. You got to constantly pick up new things. And you've got to constantly be aware of your surroundings. Um, you, uh, when I, I became a president of a college uh, one time, and the reason I did is because the, the person who was my boss at another college left, and he had the opportunity to hire me as the president of this college. He was, he was on the board of directors. Uh, but you've got, to you've got to find these opportunities, and you've got to go with it. And I, I was talking to you about um, almost being a banker, but I made that decision that I truly enjoyed teaching. Yes, probably if I were a banker, I'd be making a lot more money like Dave. Uh, but I decided that I, did, I don't think it was for me. And so these are the little decisions that you have to make with yourself during the course of your career. Yep. So let's go back. I want to stay a little bit on the track of the beginning phase of a career, especially speaking to those people that might be listening that are, you know, either getting ready to graduate or postgraduate. You know, they're just starting their careers. What mistakes do you see students and your people that you've on uh, that have just been the beginning of the career? What are some of the common mistakes that you see them making and, and, and what should they do to avoid them? Going after the money. Mm, okay. Taking a career solely because of the money. You know, lawyers make a lot of money, dentists make a lot of money, doctors make a lot of money. But are you sure that's what you want to do for the rest of your life? I mean, my, my parents wanted me to be a dentist. Why? They made a lot of money. But I just can't see myself putting my fingers in someone else's mouth <laughs> all day long. Right. So I didn't, I, I chose not to do that. But the biggest mistake that students make is how much will this career pay? And then they choose it. And then they realize, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. And then they wind up changing careers. One of the things that I tell my students, um, and most of the students that I have are sophomores and juniors, I tell them, I know what your major is. Are you sure you want to do that for the rest of your life? And so I have them really think about it. Now, of course, when you're a junior, it's going to be very difficult to change your major. Uh, you may wind up having to take more courses than necessary for graduation. But so I, so those students say, well, I, I'm kind of stuck. I've got to, you know, I want to graduate on time and this is my major. Well, then my second response is, well, go find a minor. And find a minor that you like or go to graduate school and take that and take that program in graduate school. So that's, that's uh, going after the money, unfortunately, is the biggest mistake that uh, students make uh, when they choose their career. Interesting, because I, you know, I think you and I meet people across the span of our own careers. We've met probably many people who are making great money doing financially successful, but they're miserable, right? They, they just, they're unhappy. <laughs> they complain to their spouses or their significant others incessantly. And you're like, you go, oh my God, you know, what did you do? So I think that's a great point, Dr. Roche, is to really make sure that you think about what you're, uh, you know, what it is. It's more than the money. You got to enjoy what you do. And I think a lot of, um, well, there's some of the uh, younger generations now are thinking about that a lot more. They're not necessarily 
always focused on that. Let me go back to um, sort of the, the the networking piece because you said something important, and this is important at any stage of your career. You said, look, networking is sort of like the juice of you know the oil of what helps a career move forward. Um, so if you're networking, how do how do how do what are some of the suggestions you have for folks in terms of how to make networking really pay off? It's like it's beyond just meeting someone. How do you really grow your network? How do you make sure that it stays healthy and it becomes something where you know you're helping people at the same time people are helping you? One of the things that I I, I have in my class we actually we just finished this assignment. I have them create a network an NBC a network business card where it's a business card like a, everybody else's business card it has their name their phone number their email address but their avocation what are they looking for? And so when you're networking with someone, you know, you, you're not going to whip out your resume because no one's going to read your resume right then and there. But everybody hands everybody else their business card. So why can't students who haven't graduated yet get involved in this network by, by developing a network business card? I think it's a great idea. Um, I had my students do an exercise in developing their card and the creativity in these business cards were, was fantastic. I was very proud of them and, and what they thought uh, someone would want to see. So you give someone your business card and you never know, all of a sudden, one day, maybe a month, maybe a week down the road, you get a call. Listen, send me your resume. Bingo, there you go, you're on your way. Gotta unmute myself. I think it's important, that's a great point that you know, you got to you got to invest a little bit more in these relationships, too. You just can't like connect with someone and then just like ignore them for, you know, years on end. You got to you got you to gotta have some continuity there. Um, so I think that's important. So when you when you look back at one thing you said before, too, is, you, you know, how do people make career decisions now? The way it seems that from the data and, and even from my own observations and even my own career, people have more than one career in their lifetime now. And so I started out in HR, you know, right? I took HR, I, I worked under you, under HR. And then I decided at some point in my career that I wanted to get into marketing, which I did actually, you know, many years ago. And I haven't looked back. I've, I've actually enjoyed it. But <clears throat> what is your message to um, those that are contemplating? Maybe a, they are making, a, they do want to make a career change. Maybe they decided hey, after a few years, it's not really, you know, I see something else over there. How do they make those transitions from one career to the other? Well, the transition shouldn't be made quickly. It should be made over a period of time. Uh, when you wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, I don't want to do this today, that's the beginning of when you should start transitioning your career. That's when you should start thinking about it. And that's one of the reasons why I, I tell my students you know, I know you have a major, but you know, get yourself a minor and, and go on to graduate school and, and, and learn some. When I went to college, I was a math physics major. That now, right. I, excuse me, why did I choose math and physics? And the reason is because I liked math and I liked physics in high school. So, and I, I realize that unless I'm going to be a, an astrophysicist, which I couldn't see myself doing, that I had to change my major. And of course, I took a business course. I, I took an economics course, rather. I liked it, mm -hmm. and that changed my major, and that got me into human resources. Well, I interesting. I know your career, so I can use, I'm going to use you as my, as my example, my case study here. So you made the transition from teaching, at the time, junior high school, business courses, you were a business teacher, taught other courses, <clears throat> and then you made a transition a few years later to go into the private sector. I think you went to the commodities uh, business down in New York, and then that kind of shifted your career. <clears throat> you were working as, a, as an administrator for a commodities firm. How did you do that? I mean, how did that come okay. about? Maybe you can give us an idea of how that game plan came into play. Um, I, yes, I was, I was teaching junior high school I was math, I was teaching math and teaching business. And I realized 
uh, even though I'm going to contradict myself, I was making very, very little money. And I had, and by that time, by the time I finished my career in, at the junior high school, I had two master's degrees. And so I realized that I want to do something with it. And besides, um, when I was getting my master's degree, I was, I took a course in human resources and I liked it. And so I decided that I'm going to try human resources. So I sent out my resume as we normally do when we do a job search and a commodity firm on Wall Street picked me up and I became the, their personnel assistant. It was a three people human resource. Well, in those days, it wasn't even called human resources. It was called personnel. And that's how I started. And then um, my career uh, kind of shifted a little when I did a presentation to a group of academics at New York Institute of Technology. They wanted me to come in and teach them about human resources. And so I had the president of the college, the vice presidents, the deans, and the whole bit. So I did my little shtick. And afterwards, uh, one of the deans came up to me and said, would you like to teach? And, and I, I, have a, I have a habit of always saying yes. So I said, yeah, sure. So I became an adjunct professor and then a full professor. And, and it just works out that way. So you never know that one little thing that you do, one person that likes what you just said, and they may come up and offer you a totally different career. Yeah. But what was happening is that since I liked human resources and since I, I love teaching, I wanted to do both at the same time. So, and then, it, then I got into the, uh, then I got into make, starting my own company starting my own human resource company. And so I was having my human resource company, going for my doctorate and teaching at the same time. But it was fun. Uh, it was absolutely great. And, and that brings me to where I am today. I just dissolved my human resource company um, three months ago. I had it for since 1986. Yep. Yeah, so term. very successful there. My kid, my kids didn't want it, so I figured, and nobody else. So I'm, I'm just okay. It. That's awesome. And you know, it's interesting. So if you look at that, it's not like accidentally you just bumped into a career opportunity. You were already, you know, creating that environment where you were networking, you were making connections. And I don't want people to miss the point here that you know it might look like oh there it was, but it, those opportunities came. You I you were sensitive to them, you recognize them as opportunities. And where I'm going with that is, I run into people all the time that if the, if an opportunity stared them in the face, they might not even see it. They just don't even recognize it as an opportunity because for some reason, they're just not in tune with it. You were in tune with it, like a lot of people are. They, they go, oh my gosh, this is an opportunity. And other people go, well, I don't see the opportunity. Where is it? And so I, I just kind of look at what, you're, what you've done in your career, H, teaching, to HR, to under, you know, a collegiate teaching in college and use or university level. And you've gone on from there, even done some administrative roles. So now let's shift our, our goal here. So let's talk to somebody about somebody that is in their career. And let's say they're doing well, they like what they do. Um, they're, you know, let's say they're working for a, you know, a bank or credit union or whatever they're doing. But they might be finding themselves plateauing. They're like, you know, I don't seem to be getting moving forward. And, uh, and you probably have known, as I have known, people that get, get kind of stuck in gear. They want to do more, but they just can't seem to be able to move. What suggestions do you have for those people that are in their career? We'll call it mid-career. Uh, keep your eyes open. You, you just mentioned that people don't see the opportunities. They're out there and they're staring you in the face. And hopefully by this webinar, you'll start to realize, you know, gee, maybe I am missing uh, some of the, the things that I should be concentrating on. And, oh, wow, that person just said this. Gee, let me follow up on it. Um, that's so important. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen uh, mid-level managers really unhappy. And... And, you know, they wake up in the morning and they grumble and, you know, and then when they all of a sudden they're starting to come to work late 
and uh, this they're psychologically withdrawn from the, that's the time to slap yourself in the face and say, come on, we got to go find another career. And um, a lot of times, depending upon the person that you report to, um, if the person that you report to is very honest with you and open, maybe he or she is the person that you should talk to about advancement. And if, if, uh, if, if they were a good manager and the opportunity for advancement is not there at this place, I would be very honest and tell the person, um, this is kind of it. Now, yes, you will lose the person, but would you rather have a person who really hates their job working for you or would you rather have someone else? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And I'm going to plug uh, uh, Hudson Valley Credit Union here. For those of you that are interested in uh, pursuing, like you're doing something else out there and want to look at maybe financial services, I want to take a little commercial break here, Dr. Roche, if I may. Uh, you can go to our website, hvcu.org backslash careers, and explore a little bit about what the financial services sector might have for you if you're doing something that you're no, you don't necessarily think is going to pan out. Um, I've been in the financial services industry for many years now. I enjoy it. I love marketing. I work here. I've been here with uh, Hudson Valley Credit Union for over five years. I love it here. It's a great opportunity. Lots of resources. And I want to kind of use this because we here at Hudson Valley have lots of programs, training programs, uh, educational co uh, college reimbursement programs, you know, on top of great benefits and, and I think a very good uh, sense of, you know, competitive pay for our positions. I don't always see uh, people taking advantage of the opportunities that are there within the company itself. And you, and in your HR role, you created some of these programs, you know, career development, uh, management training. So what advice do you have for people who are kind of like, hey, what do I do? How do they leverage what's already there? in the companies they're working for? Um, get more education. If your company offers uh, seminars in underwater basket weaving, take it. It's not gonna hurt you, but you never know who you may meet. You'll never know um, who's managing it. And all of a sudden you may find yourself with a little bit more knowledge than you had before that is actually going to help you advance in your career, even if that, even at that company, if that's possible. Um, if not, then you know, let the company train you, let the company develop you, and then if they if they can't offer you anything, then you go find something else. Yep, that's a great point. And I want to use us as an example at Hudson Valley. I know people here that have been here longer than me, 10, 15, 20 years started in the, as in the branch, like uh, Dr. Roche had his opportunity. They started in the bank branch, might've started as a teller. We have some of their senior managers, uh, SVPs, CFOs. So it's, they took advantage of the opportunities we have uh, within our organization. But if no matter what organization you're with, I think Dr. Roche you're saying is leverage everything you can, squeeze out every learning opportunity. And like, I, like I, I, our, our CFO, he started in the bank branch, worked his way up and now he's CFO, Chief Financial Officer of the organization. How did that happen? It be, it, he leveraged education, training, different career opportunities. So everything that Dr. Roche is saying, it, it happens, but you can't be, as you said, Dr. Roche, you can't be you know, sitting back waiting for it to happen. You kind of have to kind of take advantage of those moments when they come, come, up, come out. So I think that's a great point. So mid-career, it's, it's really being sensitive to what you can take advantage of both internally with your organization and externally. Um, you know, I want to kind of focus a little bit on uh, going back to the, the, the new career of folks. Um, we talked about networking as being important, establishing a network, working the network so that you, it's active and it's helpful to you. How, is it, how important is it to help other people? Because uh, people, you know, one of the things people say is, you know, networking is a two-way street. You not only you can't expect to take all the time; you got to expect to give back. You want to talk a little bit about that in your? Um, you never know that the person that you help that will come back to you it may not come back to you next week, next month, next year, but I guarantee you that the person that you help that act 
of helping is going to come back tenfold to you in your later life. Um, well, Dave, you're a perfect example. Uh, uh -oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Um, I saw in you uh, something that I did not see in any other students. By the way, I don't know whether anybody knows, but no. I was Dave's teacher. Yes. And um, I saw something in him that was different. And I kept in touch with him. I, as a matter of fact, I think we actually brought you on to one of the companies that I was working, uh, yep. working with. Yep. And um, so, and has it helped? Yeah, well, look, I'm, I'm doing a webinar right now. <laughs> yeah, all these years later, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's true. We are, that's a good case. I mean, I'm not embarrassed by that. That's a great case. I mean, I, I've obviously, you know, I took your general business course. I was like, wow, the business world is great. But I stayed in touch. I networked. And that led to, you know, my getting down to work in New York City and my career, you know, the whole thing. All of that isn't by accident. It's, be, it's purposeful. And it seems like, you know, oh, it's just opportunity. But even when we weren't in touch for many years, when I was in the military and I was out on the West Coast, we reconnected back then. So it's been mutual. We've helped each other out and, and in different ways. Now, Jack, coming back uh, to help us with our webinar series here, sharing your insights. It, it's all it's a good case study. And, and what I learned from that was and I taught my kids the same thing. I said, you really have to start a network early and you got to stay in touch with these people and you've got to you really got to help each other we've helped each other in many different ways over the years professionally so i get that and it's it's a big point you can't it's not a one-way street right it's yeah it, i think that's it's, it's I, I think you 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 said it correctly you and i are a perfect case study <laughs> of networking and keeping in touch and yep. one helping the other and uh uh yep. and i'm not and uh, that's another benefit of teaching i have i have students who have graduated um, and they're now alumni, and they are constantly calling me up. Uh, some of them are looking to change careers, and uh, they want a little help. And yeah, why, I mean, I'm not getting paid to do it, but that's that's what it's all about. It's it's yep. helping the other individual. And who knows, some some way, somewhere down the road, it'll come back and and really benefit you. Yep, great point. So as we kind of wrap up here, Dr. Roche. I kind of want to finish with my my last question, which is really, you know, when you think about, is there anything else that we haven't talked about tonight? Because uh, we talked about a lot. We covered networking. We talked about, you know, keeping yourself available for career opportunities, being sensitive to that. What else do you think? Uh, any final comments do you think that would be you would impart to our our listeners? Um, another one is probably going out and getting yourself a mentor. Mm of someone who kind of looks over you in your career. Um, another thing is being in control of your career. How you know, so? I, I get you, you know, don't sit back. You gotta be in control of where you wanna be. Um, when you are looking, when you are thinking about leaving this career and going to another one, you gotta research it, you gotta do your homework. Um, I, I recommend going to graduate school for everybody that I see. I mean, I, I looked in uh, an almanac and I found out how many millions of people will be graduating next May. And they're all going to be fighting for the same jobs. And so I try to convince my students, you know, stay in school, get the master's degree. And now you're a step ahead of, every, of a lot of other people. And that's going to put you in the forefront. So get a mentor, be in control, um, research that career. Um, and I guess that's, uh, that's get, uh, get, so get, get a, get a PhD, get a PhD. Well, no, it, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> some people, some people uh, go for a PhD. My degree is in education. So it's an EDD. Right. Um, but I had to do it, but I am so glad that I did it. And, you know, I got, now it's going on uh, 23 years ago yep. that I got my, you got, yeah. I got my doctorate. That's good. So that I, was, I'm like very, that I was very happy. I'm very happy about the doctorate. Yeah. So. Well, I have to tell you, Dr. Roche, it has been a great conversation. I'm sure we'll have you back again in some other career role or 
hopefully another webinar sometime down the road. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to share with our uh, HVCU uh, uh, listeners, you know, because this will be on our YouTube channel. Um, it'll also be on our website for people to access whether they're members of the credit union or not. Uh, and I, I want to thank you on behalf of the credit union for, for giving us your time tonight. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to do it. You're welcome. Um, I am thrilled to, uh, to be in touch with you again. Um, and, 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 and it's very true. I mean, I enjoy doing these things just like I enjoy teaching. And this is, a, in a way, this is like teaching. Um, I don't know. I can't. The only audience I can see right now is you. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, no, I, I'm anytime, Dave, anytime. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I want to remind you listeners here before we uh, exit that if you are interested in career opportunities and want to kick the tires on working for one of the region's largest uh, credit unions, if not one of the larger um, financial institutions in the region, go to www hvcu.org backslash careers and check out our career page and you know kick the tires take a look uh, at what a vibrant organization can do and you'll see some examples there and again I've listened to Dr. Roche and no matter what you do in your career we wish you the best uh, and we'll have you back again thank you and good night to everyone take care bye all